Welcome. Welcome to another episode of Perfectly Twisted. I'm Nicole Eggert, and this is Dave Pallet. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Good to see everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to us if you haven't already. We love that. We love you for that. <laughs> um, yeah. So how's how's everything going? I know you guys had okay. a big wedding. How was this big wedding? <laughs> Weddings are... I like looking at pictures and I like hearing stories. Attending them is a whole different um a whole other gym. thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um my my oldest son uh, was, you know, just married and it was it was great. You know, it was it was honestly it was a great day. And so uh overall it was things went as planned. It was a little bit warm, you know, for a little bit during the ceremony. I think it got up to like 84. And if you're in a different part of the country, like 84 is not a big deal. But for Southern California, it, it was warm, especially when everybody's wearing suits. So um, was, wasn't bad at all. After an hour, sun went down a little bit and it cooled down dramatically. But music was good. Food was good. Everybody had a really nice time. And it was it was a lot. <laughs> it was, it was, a, it was lot. a lot. Yeah, my son will probably get upset when I say I'm happy that it's over because I it, towards the three days leading into it, everybody's crazy stressed out. I'm just looking around going, I had nothing to do with this entire thing. Like I put nothing together. I'm just showing up. But everyone that had something to do with putting it together was a little bit stressed out. So overall, it was really a great day for our family and, and, and exciting. But I uh, appreciate you asking. I was curious to know, and I didn't ask it in text you, and I didn't ask you before the show started. You said last week you were going to Dodger Stadium because your daughter was going to perform. Dodger Stadium. You want to talk about 84 being warm. Try 104. Yes. 104. Um, holy shit. Balls <laughs> of fire. <laughs> I, I can't even believe people showed up to that game. I was like, this is one you watch from the couch in your air conditioning. Um but people were there. Luckily for us, um, the girls performed um, on the field and we were able to stay like in a shaded, like a shaded area. And then um, Keegan had really never been to a baseball game before. And oh, wow. so <laughs> the seats, the seats that we were given were nosebleeds, like way up. But they were covered, so it was also Good. in the shade. But I'm telling you, I was standing, um, you know, like scooting to the seat, and I thought I was gonna roll and fall on the field from however many hundred <laughs> feet in the air. Like it's that steep and it's that high. I was like, one wrong move, and I'm rolling, I'm rolling, I'm, going I'm, I'm rolling to my death onto the Dodger Stadium field. Like, uh, it was uh, it was a lot, it was really, really hot, but. It was fun. The girls enjoyed themselves. Um, and, you know, it's an experience. It's an experience of a lifetime. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, it's funny. I, obviously, I've said on the show, I'm a, I'm a huge Dodger fan. I usually wear a Dodger hat today. I'm not. But I never miss a game, Nicole. Like, I literally, if, if I'm out when the Dodgers are playing, I will record the game and then watch it later. I, I never miss a game. And so absolutely love it. But I, again, I was watching on Sunday and there were less people there than normal because usually that place is packed, but still a lot of people showed up. Like you said, a lot it of didn't people... matter who was playing that day. I would not have shown up. And I love no that way. Team. It no was way. And I'll way tell you, hot. there were more people than it looked like in the stands because what everybody was doing was standing, you know, yeah. like where the concession stands are and stuff like that, where you're covered a lot of people standing in those areas, not even going to their seats. And yeah. I don't blame them. Um, yeah. yeah. But there, and then, but then there were quite a few people sitting in the baking sun um, sitting there. And I thought I was going to be so clever. I was like, you know what I'll do is I'll bring an umbrella because I've never done that. I see people doing that. I think that sounds really smart. And then the first thing I read is no umbrellas. <laughs> You're blocking the people behind you. That's why I, I guess, or it could be a weapon or all of the <laughs> above. Be. Take um, out somebody's eye. Yeah. Yeah. So then I'm like searching for a baseball hat. All I can find is a Yankees. I, I found a Coors Light. I was like, neither of these are appropriate. Yes. <laughs> neither are appropriate. You're absolutely right. And I can't wear my big sun hats because without my hair, they're too yeah. big. So when I move my head, they like spin. <laughs> <laughs> they like spin around one wind and they blow off. Um, so, uh, so 
I just, what did your I, daughter think about being on the field and looking up and seeing how it looks? I mean, that place is built for 53,000 people. I think that that was exciting. I think she was more nervous about um, because they had her throwing some tricks that she's not allowed to do in competitions because it would put them into the next category. So she does like um, front handspring, double back handspring into backflip, back tuck. And so she can do all these things, but she does them in a gym. So that that field is uh, really hard. Uh, It's hard turf. It's yeah. not like the park. Yeah, uh, it's not no. even like sand at the beach. She was like, "Mom, this is really like tough turf." And I was like, "You got this. You've got this. You can do this. Just think high. Go high." Um and her practice one was perfect. The the one when they were out on the field, listen, she landed and she landed a little bit low, but she stood up so she landed the she landed Good. it. Um and, you know, it was it was a great practice run for them. This is the first time this team has uh, performed together, and I mean, no pressure. Wow, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, no yeah. pressure. Brand new routine that's specifically yeah. for the Dodger game, and first time you guys are ever performing together. And uh, good luck. No pressure. Go get them. <laughs> <laughs> now you got to take her back to. I, I'd recommend take her to a night game. It's a little bit cooler. And when it yeah. is sold out and the, it is loud. I mean, one thing about the Dodgers, and you've been to a bunch of Laker games in your life, since Magic Johnson's one of the owners, they've kind of tried to make it more like that Laker feel where it's really loud and the music. It and was loud. There's, there's an entertainment factor. Yeah, much different than it used to be before Magic and his group took over in 2012. Um, but it, it's exciting. It's a party. Usually it's, it's like party. it feels like it's a big party. I don't know that she's going to want to go back. I think she's like, <laughs> one done. I did it. Yeah. I did it. And like, not, not to be a snot, but like, I always, when I go, I have good seats. Like I'm yeah. usually like behind, you know, the, the, the home, home base. Yeah. I'm usually behind the home plate or somewhere near there or in owner's box or, you know, I've been specially invited. Uh, yeah. So this was like way up in the sky. Way up there. I, mean, I felt like it was eye level with the Hollywood sign. I was like, what is this? <laughs> Where am I? And to boot, so it's hot as all hell, right? Can't figure out how to get to the upper deck. We're on the upper deck. Yeah. Can't figure it out. Can't figure it out. And then one guy tells me the elevator doesn't go all the way up to the upper deck. Can't find the elevator anyway. We walked the no stairs. Way. I know what you're going to say. In that, and in I that, said to myself. And it's hot in there, too. Oh, it's hot. It's humid yeah, the in there. the stairs aren't outside. Myself, They're- yeah. It's okay. I can do this. Let this be another challenge. Let's go. Um, it was six floors, um, steep floors. I mean, we yeah. were way up there in the sky. But what happened is I got up the stairs. I was fine. I did it. I felt good about myself. I sat down in my seat and then the sweat came. <laughs> do you know, does that ever happen to you? Like when you do oh, yeah. you do something just, like physical yeah. and then you sit down, you stop and then you just. Then it <laughs> happens. Yeah. It was like I peed my seat. It was so <laughs> horrible. Was, I was drenched. I was I drenched. Uh, yeah. But uh, what? it was a fun day. All in all, like really fun day. Yeah, I was thinking about you all day on Sunday. Because, I, again, I was watching and I was like, I can't believe how hot it, has, it happens to be. And she has to perform. I mean, it's one thing when the players are making, you know, $50 million and they're performing. But sure. that is that is that is extremely hot. Well, so it, it was it, like it was like the sixth inning, and um, the girls all get a text from a friend that says, "Want to come over and swim?" So seventh inning stretch, we stretched and we ran out of there, and they went you. swimming. Yeah, they all went and jumped in the pool, and I thought that was the perfect ending to you know. Good for you. Good day. Yeah. You know, so uh, I'll qu- share a quick story. So Dodger Stadium is my like favorite place to be. I love Dodger Stadium. I've you know, two two boys, my oldest son happens to be a San Diego fan. My younger son, who passed away, was a big Dodger fan like me. And so I used to always tell my kids, I go, look, when I pass, I want to be cremated and I want one of you to run out on the field and drop my ashes. It's completely against the law to do, yeah. by the way. I go, you're going to get arrested, but I go, I'm going to leave money for to get you out of jail. All right. But you, you, this is the deal. So my younger son and I had this agreement where he says, I'll do it for you, dad. Without a doubt, I'll I'll, I'll do it. And I knew he would have done it for me. So he passes away, and the next year on Father's Day, because he loved going to Dodger Stadium too, 
we went on Father's Day saying this is where Jake would want to be. And we we go to the game. It's a Sunday night baseball game against the Cubs. And the whole stadium's packed. I buy three tickets for my son, my wife, myself. And it happens to be the seat next to me is wide open. It's like the only seat in the stadium that's open. Oh. And I brought my son's stuff. And I said to the person next to me, can I put my son's stuff in this seat? And they said, yeah, it's not being used. Go ahead. It was kind of kind of crazy. Kind of felt like it was meant to be that, you know, Jake was with us. And so after the game, and I've never seen the Dodgers do this in the past, they said, Father's Day, you can go on the field and you can play catch after the game. And so after the game, we would go down on the field. My older son and I, we play catch. We're the last group that's allowed on the field. And I bring my son's ashes with me. I brought Jake's ashes with me, and I dumped his ashes on the field. It's a completely against the law. Maybe I didn't do it. We'll just say for legal purposes. But uh, but basically, I dropped the ashes. And as we're walking out, the Dodgers. All of the them? Not all of them. Not all okay, of them. Okay, that's uh, a, a lot. Container. That's a lot. <laughs> I was going to say, I, that's I, a lot. I've, I've been there, done that. That's a lot of ashes. But yeah. a piece of it, right? Like some yes. of it. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I bent down like I was tying my shoe, and, and I dumped the ashes behind shortstop left field in that area. And as we're walking out, the Dodgers turned the sprinklers on, so the ashes were soaked into the field. It wasn't like they were swept up or vacuumed up, none of that I stuff. love that. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a special moment. You know, it was sad, but at the same time, I know Jake would have loved it. And so uh, it was, it was kind of wild all day long. It kind of felt like he was, he was with us, but Dodger stadium has always been my, my favorite place in the world. And, and for my younger son, it was his favorite place too. So um, I thought it was cool that she got a chance to perform there. I remember the first time I ever stepped on the field at Dodger stadium as a broadcaster, just to stand on the field was a big deal. Like, Oh my gosh, I'm standing on the, the field with my favorite players right now. And then uh, as you, your daughter knew exactly like, Hey, it's a little bit different than I've been practicing on. It, yeah. It's, it, it's kind of like a golf course. It's, per, it's perfect. And it's, it looks like it's, it's carpet or turf, but it's actually really still grass. It's, it's amazing. Softer you know? than a, uh, a golf yeah. course. I mean, harder yeah. than a golf course. Um, yes. Like more packed. I love that you brought them, brought them with you and like it all just worked out like that. It was meant to be. Yeah. It was one That's of those days that was, that kind of yeah. went out. it was a, it was, it was a great day, especially it was a hard day, but it was, it was a great day. And so, um, yeah, it was, it was something else. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I was looking at that thermostat though all day long going, Oh my gosh. It is so hot. And for people who aren't in Southern California or listening to the show, today is the first good day we've had in about two weeks here, right? I yep, mean, it's be 82. Be, yeah, 82 it's 76 in San Diego where I'm at. But anything's better than 100 something. Oh, my. It's just that's not what we pay for with our taxes. We aren't the Arizonas. We're, we we no. expect great weather <laughs> we, we all the time. The 80s. We want the high 70s and 80s. It yes. was funny as Keegan was getting ready for our school this morning. She was yelling off what the temperatures were going to be all week. And she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, it's going to be a good week. And I thought, you know, it's right because it's going to get into the 70s at some point this week. And um, hallelujah. You know, kidding. I'm with I'm with you. I'm with you. I gotta I gotta ask. I'm looking at, at you right now. I'm looking at your hair. Your hair is growing back. It's, it, to me, it seems like a rapid rate. But you're you're doing <laughs> stuff with it now. Like it's not just there. You're you're combing it. You're moving it. Is it as your hair comes back? What do you feel? Well, it was really funny because I, um, you know, it always it was just there, and then all of a sudden one day I woke up. And I look in the mirror and I go. Ah, I need to brush my hair. <laughs> it was like, I haven't said that in a year, you know, or eight months. Yeah. Um, uh, so I was like kind of excited because it was like all over the place. And then I was like, I, I have to comb my hair, which will bring me to my product alert. So I was wondering, like, what the hell do I do with this? It's yeah. like fluffy. And then it can kind of go straight. And I look like Eminem. And listen, I love Eminem. <laughs> and he's fantastic. But that haircut is not for me. Um, or, you know, what they call a Caesar cut. Um, yeah. It's not for me. So, yeah, I wanted to give it a little bit of like um, a little bit of style. And I was thinking like, what can I use? What can I use? And um, I hate like crunchy hairspray. I hate, I hate when you can see product and having blonde, fine hair product really shows up. And I remembered back in like the early 2000s, probably the nineties, the biggest thing was Tancho sticks. All the guys used it. Um, but the smell of it was really like um, intense. Yeah. Um, Dylan's dad always used it. Um, 
And it just worked. It, 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 it worked. It kind of dirtied your hair. It held it in place. So I went online and they had come out with a new scent, which seems to be more geared towards women. Um, it's a cherry blossom scent. So Tancho, my friends, Tancho. And I got, it's more expensive. The new scent is obviously more expensive than the old one, but I think it's well worth it because it's, it's nice and it's light. So I got this for like 15 bucks or something on Amazon. I went to all the stores. It used to be everywhere. Um, this is how old I am. And I was like, Toncho. And they're like, what? Um, but you know, <laughs> 50 other brands make, um, a stick and everything. But I was like, no, I want that original one. I want that one. Cause it keeps your hair soft. Um, so I got it. And Good. I love it. I use it every day. I go anywhere where it's like sticking up. It's cute. It's pink. Um, I I just love it. I'm so happy I thought of it and um, that it was still available. And I highly recommend it. And you know what else Good. I used it for was for Keegan's braids. She has bangs. So I needed to French braid her bangs back. And um, I put all of that in her hair and it made her hair still soft, but kept it all in place. So I didn't have to use like a gel, which then looks crunchy and wet. Yeah. Um, and it, and it held, it held all day. And my daughter, um, goes, what is this when we were in New York? And she used it for like flyaways. And she's like, that's amazing. I need that. So I highly recommend it. Tancho. Okay. Tancho, Tancho, go get some. If, uh, if you have any of those problems, it's really, it's a good investment. I love it. I live by it every day. So thanks. Good thanks deal. for the compliment. And yeah. I, I kind of owe it to Tancho. <laughs> are you, um, are you excited though? That, that, you know, your hair now, it, not only is it coming back, which I'm sure a lot of people, when you lose your hair, you go going, was it going to come back the way it was? But the fact you can do something with it, like, like in your mind, how, how do you want to bring your hair back to what it was? Like the same length, all that. What do you want to do? You know, if I'm being completely honest with you, I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to let it get. Um, well, I think for a while I might keep it short. I'm telling you, it is the easiest hair to deal with. Like, it's just the easiest hair. And um, it's just one less thing I have to worry about. And I think it looks good. Like, I get a lot of compliments that the the short hair looks good on me. So I've never had it this short. So um, why not? And I'll let why it grow not? a little bit longer, take it up. You know, I, I'm going to go back and forth with it. And I'm sure eventually I'll grow it back out and yeah. um, back down. I'm sure of it because I'll get bored of this as I get bored of every hairstyle. Uh, so but for now, I love it. I just yeah. love it. I loved Good. the bald. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I, I I was very happy with the bald hair. Um, with the bald head, should I say. So for me, yeah, whatever. It's more about my eyebrows and my eyelashes. I'd really like them to come in. My eyebrows are coming in. Um, I My eyelashes, it's a very slow, but I imagine that they're going to be a slow grower. And, you know, the funny part is, is whenever I do an appearance or I'm, I, you know, I've been doing a lot of stuff, usually I have a makeup artist, but there's been a couple of times that I haven't. And I've been trying to put false eyelashes on myself. Like, ladies, that is an art form. Uh, <laughs> what? What? It is so hard. They put them on and then one eye looks like I have a lazy eye or, you know, <laughs> one's too high and the other one's pointing down. I was like, this is not. Uh, this is not easy. And I'm yeah. blind, right? Like, so you, you can only put eyelashes on with no glasses. I can't have my glasses no on. No kidding. So I'm like in that really close up mirror and I'm trying and, and then I go in and I go, Keegan, how does this look? She goes, try again. <laughs> like, try again. Try again. <laughs> like, ah! So um, I'll be really happy to not um, have to ever worry about fake eyelashes again because I've never had to wear them in my life. So I just yeah. never did. So I don't know how to put them on, but, um, yeah, I'm not good at it. When you do like, as you said, appearances and it, you've been, been doing a lot of stuff the last month or so, um, do they usually supply somebody or do you have to bring somebody with you? I have to bring somebody with me. You have to bring someone with you. Okay. This is like, this is the money pit of like <laughs> men have it so easy. They do. 
They, they, they really, you guys really do. You know, I know you have other difficulties that are separate, but when we're talking about vanity and, you know, yeah. glam and all of that, man, you guys have it easy. Well, as you know now, I mean, just because, you know, your hair is shorter that just taking a shower, just rinsing your wash and rinsing. And if you want to throw conditioner, fine, but still you, you can get out in five minutes. You know, yeah. I mean, it is your hair dries so much faster and you're just you're moving on. Yeah. I'm Bru just wiping it with teeth. the towel. I will say the one thing is, though, is I have to be a little calculated in the shower because I don't have any eyebrows or eyelashes to stop the water from no kidding. <laughs> running down. Yeah. So I have to dry my hair before like I can wash my face or shave my legs or do any of those yeah. things, because um, otherwise the water literally just goes right into my eyeballs. Um, just like sweat. I was dying. Yeah. I was dying at Dodger Stadium. Uh, the sweat is just dripping, going straight right into now. my eyeballs. And I'm like, oh, oh. God. Okay. you know, <laughs> eyebrows and eyelashes serve such a purpose. Like they're yeah. so underrated. They do such a good job. And I would have <laughs> never known until I didn't have any. They really protect your eyeballs. That is funny. That yeah. that 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 is funny. You bring back the old uh, Bjorn Borg headband, like uh, Wimbledon. We just wear the yeah. the, the sweatband over on your, yeah. your eyebrows. Oh my gosh, that, that that'd be funny. Your daughter would be horrified. Sure, I think mean, I'd be horrified. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the, a real thing. That's it. Public relation wise, are you still like on the tour? You're still doing uh, Baywatch stuff. I'm still doing stuff. Um, so for anybody who's been wondering, and I know I'm getting a lot of the questions, the international starts the 18th. So um, in Europe, you will be able to see the documentary uh, as of the 18th on Disney, Disney Plus, Hulu, if you have it there. But I don't think a lot of countries have Hulu. Um, it will be it will be out. So now we're starting to roll out doing international press. So. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a whole new, <laughs> it's a whole new set of stuff, but it's fun. I mean, you know, it's a lot, but it's, it's a lot in a short period of time. So it's okay. Yeah. I'm not, um, I'm excited. This is much better than nobody wanting to talk to us. <laughs> you know, I was, uh, I was disappointed this week that I didn't get any housewives of Orange County. And then I was wondering a couple things. Is it because of, you know, Basically, the the time of the debate. month with the hol with the holidays, and then the debate, which they said was going to be the most watched debate in history, and so obviously they decided not to run a new one this week, and and a, none of the really new shows came out except the late night shows were going. But um, it was one of those where I always look forward to September. You know, hey, the new shows are back, and then yeah. you know the, the shows that you and I love. Obviously, we're going to get new ones in, in that as well. But the debate. Did you did you watch? You know, it's a normal we don't talk a lot know, of politics, but did you watch? I didn't, and I need to go back and catch up. I was in the hospital, sedated, going through oh. all the testing, so um, I'm highly claustrophobic. So I can't do these um, MRIs and CTs. I can't do them like awake. So I had to go do the rounds of um, of all the testing. So I missed it all. And I'm like, what? I, I have to get online. I need to know what this is talking about. Eating cats or eating pets like what happened <laughs> what what the actual fuck did i miss because i i didn't think it could get any crazier but apparently it did and i was knocked it, out it cold got... somewhere what happened okay well the there's a story a false story that came out out of ohio that uh illegal haitians are eating pets and eating cats so okay I think I think a lot of I think everybody at some point has been fooled on Twitter to go is this a real account not a real account like you have to look into things before you repeat it yeah. and this was a, a false story I mean it was one of those where you know someone calls and wishes you know the fake happy birthdays on the news and if you could sneak a fake name in it's hilarious he fell for it and he repeated the story on he during being the debate. Donald, right? Donald Trump, yeah. And he <laughs> he repeated the story as soon as he did it. I went, "Oh my god. Oh my god." Like, dude, that that's a fake story. You fell for a fake story and you're whoever told you the story fell for a fake story. And so ABC right on it said, "Sir, that it's not it's not a real story." And he goes, it, "It's real." And he pushed back and David Muir's like, "Sir, we checked with the county supervisor. It's a fake story." There have no, been no reports of uh, cats or dogs being eaten in Ohio. And it was an embarrassing moment. He kept trying to, he didn't want to be told he was wrong. So he pushed back. 
but it was it was an embarrassing moment. It was it wasn't good. It wasn't. I good. mean, and, you know, and, he's and had a I'm, lot of embarrassing moments, but this one yeah. sounds um like top notch. And from the guy who's always screaming about fake news, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a good point. You know, so there are two things that that hurt. You know, like there are things about him where she hit him and you could go, okay, that stung. Like, you know, like kind of like a boxing reference, like she, she connected. The one was she mentioned the size of his crowds that bothered him a lot. And then it bothered him a lot that he said, people are so bored at your rallies that people are leaving. That hurt. But the one, the next one line that she used that hurt was when she said, "You are fired by eighty-one million people." And oh, it did was, she? Oh, she's yeah. sassy. Okay, I've got yeah. to, I have got to watch yeah. this because if, um, uh, yeah. yeah, as a guy that's a sports guy, it was, it was like boxing. Like, I want you to swing as hard as you can. You're gonna miss, and then I'm gonna tag you with the next one when you're wide open. And she did that the entire time for an hour and a half. She she warmed down. I mean, he's been involved in seven debates, and this was the worst he's he's looked. And she she tore him apart pretty good. It was go back and watch it again. I don't know what side you're on, but I think even if you're a, a Trump person, you're listening to us right now, you would say that was not not great. Just like you know when he faced Joe Biden back in June, and Joe was you know looked like an old man with uh, open mouth, mouth breathing every time he's trying yeah. to listen. It made him, it exposed him. He was exposed. And then she came out right away and says, let's do it again. So her side immediately said, let's have another debate. And he probably was thinking, I don't want to do a second one. He has to do another one with her. He has to. He has to save face. He has to go back and do another one. The vice presidents will go out in October. Should be exciting. But it's it, looking at it, he needs to, he needs to redeem himself. He needs to do a better job. Do you think he's capable um, of happen. redeeming himself? I, I mean, I just—I I don't know. He, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I mean, I would, I would go back and, and watch if I was you. Like, I yeah, am. I oh, I am. I just yeah. haven't had the time. Um, yeah. I definitely am. Uh, uh, you know, and listen, you know, I hate to see anybody just get obliterated, obliterated like that. But um, I think he kind of had it coming because he's called her so many names. Yeah. You know, you don't want to come after a woman and tell her that she got her job being on her knees. And you, you yeah. just, you know, yeah, either side of the fence you're on and it makes no difference to me. I don't care. You just don't come after a woman like that and expect her to not come out swinging. Because yeah. women have a way of putting their emotions to the side and um, and. You know, like you, you say, like you never want to deal with a scorned woman, right? You, yeah. you, you just don't. She'll put her emotions to the side, and she's gonna come at you with the best she's got. She's gonna, yeah. she's gonna come at you intellectually, and um, you know that's that's the power of the pussy. <laughs> you, you know what he? People say he doesn't prepare. <laughs> he needs he needs to prepare. I mean that whatever rhetoric that is, that game needs to change because she came prepared. I thought it was interesting. Watch the very beginning, Nicole, too, is, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who will say they liked, you know, the country and a lot of his supporters liked the country the way it used to be, meaning men had more power. And the way it starts when they both go out on the stage, she has to go to him to shake his hand. He won't go to her to shake her hand. Like she walked across the stage and it was like, well, being a gentleman, you uh, you walk over and shake her hand, too. It was it was bizarre. She didn't initiate the contact. And then she got to me a, a huge push is Taylor Swift came out right afterwards and supported her. I don't know if you, you were able to catch that as well, but I did see that. And I and, did see that. And I think that that's it. And she's like holding a cat. The meme I'm seeing make it, a lot make is in front of JD Vance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um yep, I would look out. I would look out. Yeah. She's got a young a lot of young um voters who maybe didn't vote in the past that are gonna i agree with that forth. yeah i agree I, I agree with that and uh usually it's always the you know the older people over 65 that show up to vote i think taylor swift brings out a lot of young people that all of a sudden if they weren't registered to vote they will show up to vote because of hey this she is why she, she feels yeah i mean she's the biggest star in the world right now oh, you know yeah. she, she's a huge star and people, yeah. you know, when they watch different channels, they can deny that all they want. But she is, she's a huge She's star. the biggest star. And not only that, she's very smart. She's intelligent. She's fair. She's giving. She's kind. She gives back. She, um, she's got a head on her shoulders. You know what I yeah. mean? She's not just this like big pop star 
taking her paychecks and living her life. She really cares about the people. And um, that's the part they're like discounting, I think. I, I'm, I'm with you. I, you know, I became a, a bigger fan of hers when she used to live in, she used to live in Nashville at some point and she lived really close to my sister and my sister, where every time we drive by that's Taylor Swift's house. And then she m- made a move to New York. And when she moved to New York, she took the proceeds from her first album when she was in New York and she donated it all to the New York city public school system. I mean, a lot of people you know, talk about putting your money where your mouth is. She, she did it. As you said, there was, you know, how much money do you need? And, she said, I love this city and I'm going to embrace this city and I'm going to take my proceeds from my work and I'm going to donate it to the public school system. It's pretty big, yeah. pretty big. Yeah. You and know? listen, I'm not as swifty as far as like her music. I don't, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit, um, younger generation, but as a woman and as a role model, um, she's everything. I, I give it yeah. to her all day long. I'm a fan of that. I'm a fan of her as a person. I am too. Yeah, I, I'm I'm with you. I, I don't know if I can name more than three songs, but uh, as a person, I'm, I'm always for good people, you know. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, it was, it was interesting. Um, definitely worth going back and watching. It was it was unusual for sure. And then today, as we record the show on 9-11, it was strange to see that less than 12 hours they're together, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's Trump, it's Kamala, it's J.D. Vance. At Tim Waltz, all of them are together. I mean, then they are shaking hands and doing photo opportunities. And <laughs> it was very, very strange to see just 12 hours later after just a, a big time fight on TV that they're all together <laughs> yeah. again. You know, it's, yeah. it was, it was something, it was something else to watch, but anyway, that's, uh, th- that's kind of a, a quick breakdown. And uh, as you mentioned, there's, there's no show next week. We will be back in a couple of weeks, but no show next week. As you said, you're going through still your, your, no, I'm going to record. So I, I'm, I'm, I, listen, don't hold me to it. I'm attempting to do something different. Um, okay. Dana Wilkie from Beverly, uh, housewives, Beverly Hills housewives, um, we are going, she has a podcast. We're going to record one tomorrow. Okay. I'm going to send it to you. We're going to see what Good. we think about it. It'll be a great, um, it'll be a great episode for next week instead oh, of having to skip so a week. We will yeah. have something to release hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, right. um, and, and I think it's going to be really cool for anybody who's interested in housewives because, uh, she's got a bunch of questions for me and then I have yeah. a bunch of questions for her. And, okay. um, you know, so it'll be half about me, half about her and the housewives. And I think it's going to be, you know, a really interesting, um, different format, but interesting yeah. and fun, if nothing else. I love that people, uh, I'm glad you're going to, you're able to provide something because again, you see the emails that come in and people are, Hey, what happened to you? I'm so glad you're back. And, and we, we see those and appreciate the fact that you missed the show. So, uh, again, um, I'm glad we have something to release also at the same time. Um, wish you the best because again, you're still, you're still trying to get back to hundred percent to where you are as well. And you know, who she is right. Remember, she's the one that yeah. had the infamous, these are the $25,000 sunglasses and yeah. she's gone on to, um, be more of a commentator about the housewives because she knows all the inside scoop. So she gets interviewed for like the Erica Jane documentary. She gets interviewed for all these documentaries. She, she sort of pivoted from being the housewife to being, um, sort of an expert and commentary, whatever that word is. So for, um, so that's interesting. So she's got a lot of, she's got a lot of goods and a lot of stuff we can talk about. Perfect. No, it's yeah. really exciting. Really exciting. All right, let's get to, uh, let's get to your mailbag here. We have uh, five questions here. Again, Nicole's mailbag. If you uh, have a question for Nicole, it's easy. Perfectly twisted pod.com. It's right there on the website, uh, right at the top. And you sit, submit your questions. We have uh, Daphne. Daphne T uh, has some questions for you. You ready? Hi, Daphne. It says, what you Nicole, got, Daphne? You... what you got? <laughs> Nicole, while you were on Baywatch, it was one of my favorite shows. So I wanted to know what was your favorite Matt and Summer storyline? Mine was the octopus episode and when Summer was haunted by a ghost in the hotel. Okay. The octopus one looked ridiculous if you ask me but <laughs> but from a production standpoint and shooting it so much fun because again we're in um you know i i've said this before and i will always stick to this i love an underwater set i love um 
I love it's like it brings back like when I was a little girl swimming in the pool pretending I was a mermaid, you know, and it was my underwater world. Um, and I would be especially happy when we went to Hawaii and there'd be caves in the pools like that. That was like so big for me. So this is like my grown up chance to like live out that fantasy. So to be um, on set doing that octopus, it was really fun. Like I was hooked up to a rig that would like pull me back and forth. And then this big like arm that came over. Um, I, I mean, we all got a good laugh out of it, but it was, it, it was fun. It was all in the vein of Baywatch. Um, it was really pushing, you know, the boundaries of reality here. Um, that was a really good time. So all three of us got to do that. And um, that was really fun. What was the second part of the question? Uh, second part of the question was, um, let me go back to it. It says, um, mine was uh, the octopus episode when Summer was, oh, and when Summer was uh, haunted uh, in the go by the ghost in the hotel. Okay. I did not like the, the Coronado being seduced by a ghost. It, it was like so awkward to be laying in bed with all these people watching, you know, doing a love scene is one thing doing it by yourself. Um, you're really, you're really out there by yourself. <laughs> so, um, funny story. What I did is, um, there had been wigs on set and I glued a bunch of, um, underarm hair in my armpits. So, um, when we, we did the take, I, I, you know, was like lifting my arms and pretending I was being seduced and I had these big, huge, hairy armpits. And I went, you know, and me and the makeup and hair were cracking up. Just, I mean, we had, I had to make light of it somehow. Of course it didn't make the show, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it was my way of like lightening the mood and like getting through it with humor. So I thought it'd be funny to lift up my arms and have really hairy armpits. So um, I did love, what I did love about that episode was all the time, uh, the time period, the way they did our hair and the clothes we got to wear. I thought all of that was really fun. And of course, I loved being at the hotel. That hotel yeah. is classic. It's a beautiful beach. It was a great time. Um, that part of San Diego is beautiful. And, um, you know, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> it's a mixed <laughs> bag. A lot of it is fun. A lot of it is weird. Uh, but yeah, you make the most of it. How long were you in? Do you remember how long you were there in San Diego at the Coronado Hotel? I, I want to say uh, we probably shot there four or five days, yeah. and then I probably stayed for the weekend. Um, yeah, so it was a good amount of time. Good deal. Good deal. It's always one of those when you're in a city, and there, there are a few shows that have been shot in San Diego. I don't think – I think any time there's a show that's shot or, or you know filmed in your city where it's not typically L.A., it's always a big deal, you know? And so when I remember that, when that came out going, wait a second, the Baywatch crew was, you know, in San Diego. You're like, we missed it. We didn't yeah. even know, you know? Well, that so hotel was, is so timeless, right? And it's definitely yes. takes you back. Um, they haven't modernized it much. So it's like uh, it captured that, that time yeah. period and it just was authentic and beautiful. So, yeah. and on the beach, yeah. so it worked for us. And on the beach. Yeah. I was just yeah. there a couple of weeks ago. I, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's over a hundred years old and they've, they've done a great job. Uh, yeah. It was just one of those like, wow, we didn't know, you know, the most famous show on TV was right in our backyard and we didn't catch it. But I remember when the whole thing went down. Uh, next question is uh, Nicole. I'm, I'm team Matt. Uh, by the way, uh, what was it like working with David Charvet? Do you still keep in touch? And when was the last time you saw each other? Um, so David Charvet, I I knew way before Baywatch. We ran with the same friend group. He went to Beverly Hills High School, which a lot of my friends did too. Um, so I was always around him. So when we worked together, it was, um, you know, pretty comfortable and then I did reach out to him for the documentary and um, no, I haven't seen him in a while. And um, he lives out in Malibu. I wish him the best. I wish him well. Um, I'm not sure I understand like where he's coming from as far as the show goes. But, uh, you know, I think he's living his best life out in Malibu. Okay. And weirdly no i haven't seen him in a very long time okay 
Uh, next question. It says, Nicole, when you were asked to do Baywatch Hawaiian wedding, did you accept straight away or were you a bit nervous about returning? No, oh, fuck yeah. I was like, yes, put me on the next plane. I had always said, let's shoot this. Why are we not shooting in Hawaii? Why are we not like in tropical warm weather? So I was all in. I was all in. I, w I couldn't be more excited. Uh, it was, and we shot at Turtle Bay, which is like such an amazing resort. I got to bring Dylan. She was little. Um, and it was all of us. A lot of us hadn't worked together before. And I had recently become friends with Jason Momoa right before that. So it was fun to be able to get to be on set and work with him. Um, so no, it was ideal. It was like, why not? There was nothing, there was nothing to lose. I, I was all in. I was all in from the second they sent it to me. <laughs> I was like, when are we leaving? Let's go. Pack it up. <laughs> Are you just curious about Jason Momoa? Are you, were you surprised or are you surprised or not at all that the way his career has just boom taken off? No, I'm not surprised. I mean, he's a specimen. Like that man is uh, a gorgeous human being and on the inside too. Like I, I, yeah. I will say to you, I met Jason Momoa at like some kind of reunion Baywatch party thing that had nothing to do with a, a show. And we clicked right away and we became fast friends. And, uh, and then when I got to spend all that time with him in Hawaii, he's just a real, like down to earth, um, not full of the bullshit. He just really like, it's always working on health. And, um, I, I remember one thing about him is he would wear flip flops, but he would put the, you know, the, the thing that goes in between the big toe and the next yeah. toe, he'd wear them like a couple toes down. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> that seems bizarre, like well, it's bizarre, but it's supposed to like, keep your feet more flat, like so that you're okay. grounded to the earth. He just is full of information like that. Um, you know, he was, and then he married Lisa Bonet, which to me is like, oh my God, she's the next best thing. I mean, like the, I don't know if you could have a more gorgeous, perfect couple. I just really, I really like his, his vibe. I, I really like his mindset. I really like his vibe. I think he's a good guy. He's kind. He's, um, he's just not what you would think. You know, a lot of guys, when they get that famous, and yeah. women are swooning all over them all the time. You know, you kind of get a certain guy. They turn into a certain kind of guy. Not him. He's a good guy. He's a good, 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 solid person. He seems like a good guy just from just from what I see when he does interviews, late night stuff. And I'm like, this guy seems like a ton of energy and a really good guy. Yeah. Really enjoyed time. I hung out with him. Really, really good guy. Good deal. Good deal. It says uh, here we go. Question four on Baywatch. Hawaiian wedding. They put Summer and Hobie together. Did you find it a bit weird as Summer first met Hobie when he was like 12 or 13 years old? I did. Um, I did. <laughs> I did. And they, they did this thing where they reminded me that I was 18, 19 and he was 12. So that, that age gap is not that big of a deal. It was back then. Um, and I didn't work with him that much back then. So uh, it, it, it was weird. And so then, you know how it is like when like six or seven years or how many years we are apart, it changes when you grow up, yeah. all of a sudden you're adults and you're like six years, like, wow, yeah. that's no big deal. Like that's nothing. Right. Um, so at first, yeah, at first I did find it weird, but then we hung out and spent time and I saw that he's a grown man. He was sober. Um, really good friends with his mom. His sister was there and we all became very tight, very close and um, always very comfortable around Jeremy. So to, good. you know, if you have to have a love interest, it's the best to be comfortable with them. The chemistry comes off better. Everything. It makes everything easier. Um, and he's jovial. We, we just, he and I are the same. We just want to laugh all the time. We just want to laugh. We want to make the most of it. We want to have the best time. So he and I are a good match like that. Good. Good deal. It was great when he was on the show too. Great yeah. guy. Good guy. All right. Last question. This is Nicole, when you were younger, did you ever bump into or hang out with Leonardo DiCaprio's posse like Tobey Maguire, et cetera? Have you ever met Leo? 
I've met Leo. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you have yeah. trouble with the eyebrows and the eyelashes, I, I, it looked like you gave a different look right there. Um, yes, yes, I know. Okay. I, I have spent time with Leo. Okay. <laughs> without without kissing and telling um yes i have definitely um known leo toby yes i know toby from um being you know out and having the same friend circle dylan's dad uh ran with them too he was very he was tight with all of them yeah. so there was a big group of those guys leo's a good guy he's another one that's like solid solid good guy head on his shoulders, um, good heart. And Toby too. I always really, really like Toby. It's funny. I watched something recently of Toby, like losing his shit at the paparazzi because yeah. he was trying to drive and he couldn't see because of all the, um, all of the flashes. And he got out and I was like, go Toby. Good guy. All, all, all good guys, decent, decent men, you know, and, and they, they've had everything thrown at them and they could be, yeah. They could be the biggest slimiest jerks in the world, and they're not. They're um, they're true gentlemen. I I like that whole crew. Leonardo DiCaprio for me is a top five actor. Like he to me, he's outstanding. I know a lot of people don't want to give credit to younger actors. They always go to the the older actors, the Pacinos, the De Niro's. Leonardo DiCaprio is so good. I, I'm okay. I'm just really really impressed. There are two stories that that I always think about. I have two friends that did this. One was a buddy of mine. He went to school with Leonardo DiCaprio before he was famous and he goofed on him all the time. Like you aren't going to make it like everybody in Hollywood wants to be an actor. You have zero chance. And then he becomes a star. And I was, every time I see the guy, I'm like, Hey, have you ever caught up with Leo and, and told him, he's not gonna <laughs> you know, it's this always makes me laugh. And uh, a buddy of mine is actually, he's a friend of yours as well. He went to high school in ninth grade with uh, Tony Hawk, the skateboarder. And Tony Hawk used to come on the skateboarder magazines. Like, what's the deal with the skateboard magazines? Because I want to be a professional skateboarder. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Never going to happen. <laughs> we've had him on the show. And Tony Hawk always reminded me, because, hey, by the way, the skateboarding thing kind of worked out. I'm worth $500 million now, yeah. in case you want to ask. And so he just, it's always, he brings it up all the time. But it is so funny that he called out Tony Hawk and my buddy called out Leo for, you have zero chance of surviving. Zero and, chance, uh, yeah. Both these guys are just the top of the game. It always, always makes me laugh when people doubt someone and they become that kind of a star. It's incredible. Well, fun fact, if you haven't watched the documentary docu-series, I mean the Baywatch docu-series, I'm telling you, go watch it. You will learn that Jeremy Jackson beat Leonardo DiCaprio out for the part of Hobie. Look at that. Look at that. And it's a running joke with Jeremy and us, and we always go, oh, poor Leo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> whatever happened to that kid yeah whatever happened to that guy you know boy did leo miss out <laughs> yeah no kidding <laughs> that is funny his career to a whole different place right so you know uh sometimes you don't get the part and uh it's a blessing absolutely that is funny that is funny daphne appreciate the questions that was great again we we want as many questions as we can get uh, go to perfectlytwistedpod.com and look for the mailbag at the top of the screen and submit your questions. We'll get them on. But I appreciate those, Daphne. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Love them. And uh, can't wait to hear the next ones. And again, yeah, check for the show next week. It should be fun. I'm I'm hoping it's full of fun gossip and, and information. And, uh, and then I'll be back. Um, I will be back post-surgery. Fantastic. Looking forward yeah. to seeing you then, and, and we all wish you the best of luck. So, uh, again, we aren't going to miss any shows, which is fantastic. It'll just be a little bit different. This will uh, be released normally, and then the next one will be a little bit different. But I'm excited. And and for the people that are nice enough to write in and say they're so happy that that we don't miss shows, <laughs> good. You, you aren't missing anything. We, we see those messages as well. So I uh, appreciate that. that. That's awesome. And, and, again, everybody's with you, Nicole, of what Thank you're going you. through still. Thanks. Yeah, I need the prayers. I need the prayers this this next two weeks, guys. I I, I really appreciate it. I'm scared. Um, I'm scared. Uh, and you know, it's different. I, my boobs have been trying to kill me though, so it, um, I, I have a bittersweet. <laughs> I have a bittersweet goodbye with them because yeah. um, you know, I, I love them and I want to keep them, but they're trying to kill me, so they have to go. So um, yes, I appreciate. Uh, all the well wishes. I really, I need the strength. So thanks. And uh, see you next week.